Pastor, you have an announcement about the ice cream? You'll do it in a little bit. Okay. You don't have a bulletin this morning, as you can see. So the announcements for this week, Monday is a finance committee meeting at 2 p.m. Administrative council is at 7 p.m. And as always, the administrative council meetings are open to everyone. So you can come and find out what's happening here at Rock Walkin, which is a lot. <laughs> And then, of course, Saturday morning, any of you men that would like to join the men's Bible study in Wesley Fellowship at 8 a.m. Uh, Debbie has um, backpacks, reminder that backpacks for Pemberton Elementary are due on Sunday, September 4th. Yes, Debbie, you have more backpacks available? I do not have backpacks okay. available. They okay. have been sold out. Good. Um, so, and I looked at other places, but they are very expensive. So if you didn't get a backpack, you would still like to buy a school supply. If you didn't get a backpack, they're expensive and hard to find. But she said you can buy school supplies and bring them to church, and we will bless them along with the backpacks. Uh, and Women's Christian Fellowship will resume on September 13th at 1.30 p.m. in Wesley Fellowship. Anybody have anything else? No? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you and praise you that we are able to come into this place today to worship you, to love you, and to feel your holy presence. We lift up Pastor Steve, and we just ask that you anoint him in a mighty way today. We lift up this service to you, Lord. May all we sing and say and do give you honor and praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now stand and join us as we sing our praise songs. The first one is on page 15 in your songbook. Glory.
really that chorus again. Okay, I want to hear the whole church singing here. Go on in.
page 44, who you say I am. God created each one of us different, but he knows who we are. And he created us to be that person, to live for him and his purposes. Amen? Amen. and her recovery from her knee surgery. We want to continue to lift up Helen and her family this week. Um, any other prayer concerns? Praises? 
I think we had a big praise from last oh, night. Amen. Yeah. Woo! If you met, if you didn't come last night to the ice cream social, you missed it. Yeah. It was awesome. Oh, Absolutely God. awesome. God is good, oh, and all the time. God is good. Okay. All right. Any others? Prayer concerns this morning? Yes. Can you keep praying for Jason? Jason Pease? Yes. Okay, yes, I heard one over here somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Thanksgiving for old friends and new friends and the blessings they bring. Thanksgiving for old friends and new friends and the blessings they bring. Okay. Yes, Charles? <laughs> yes, thank you, Iris, for all you did for last night. Amen. All the glory goes to God. All the glory goes to God. But it, he, he has given you the breath and the willpower to do what you do. And that's the help. And a husband, a wonderful husband to help you. Yes, yes. I don't think people realize sometimes how much goes into planning something that big. And it's a lot of planning. And God has given her health and the strength to do it and wonderful people to surround her to do it. So, amen. I, I just praise God for, uh, for Tommy's appetite. Because <laughs> we lost money without Tommy eating last night. Any others? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much for who you are and for who you made us to be. We are who you made us to be, Father. Each one different, each one having different abilities and talents. But as we talked about in Sunday school this morning, we need each other. We need to come together as the body of Christ and in fellowship with one another like we did last night because we need each other. And what a, what a blessing it is to know that you have given us these wonderful people as brothers and sisters in Christ to know that we are never alone because you are with us, but we are never alone because we have such wonderful friends. Father, we just want to lift up uh, all the people who are suffering, those who need healing and comfort in the loss of loved ones. We pray, Father, for our government, our county, our city, our state government, and most especially, Father, our federal government. We just pray, Father, for our leaders, that they will come to know you as their Lord and Savior, and that they would make the correct decisions in your will and not theirs. And that's for us, too, as we look to make day-to-day -day decisions, that we always consult you first, because you are the one who knows it all, and the one who will make our path straight. Father, we just love you so much, and we ask that you be with us in the coming week and to keep us safe from harm, that you will surround everyone on our prayer list with your love and your strength. And let's pray now the prayer your Father told us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Thank you, Father, for the many blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. May these tithes and offerings and gifts be used to glorify you and to build your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. celebration with the Holy Spirit, with the ice cream social, and I mean, it was just a, a roaring success as far as I could tell, and uh, there was some full people coming out of there. Uh, I was a busy beaver, though. I only had a hot dog. I don't know what Tommy had. Every time I look at him, he was chewing. <laughs> yeah, he's shaking his head. He knows. <laughs> he knows. So, um, what's that? Going into ministry. You That's right. <laughs> so it's good to uh, be out here. I didn't know, you know, exactly how it's going to go being outside, but it is just absolutely beautiful. And uh, although I do, do I, keep, I keep catching myself seeing who's going by. Anybody? Does anybody? Is, it, is, it, is anybody else or just me? Okay. So uh, let's pray. Lord, we just invite you into this place, Lord. Um, you have full authority here, Lord, and we ask for soft hearts and open ears. Lord, Lord, we just ask that you open our eyes up and just receive your word, Lord, that we can just build your kingdom through what you teach us, Father. And we thank you, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 Okay. So I'm going to start out with scripture. And <clears throat> the message today is basically, I can and I will. And we can and we, 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 we will because we have the Lord with us. The Lord is with the church. The Lord is with us individually. And he loves each and every one of us. And he can't wait to show us new things. So we're going to begin with Deuteronomy 2, 1 through 3. It says, Then we turned and we journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord, as the Lord spoke to me, we skirted around my, uh, Mount Sire uh, for many days. And the Lord spoke to me saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward. And that's what we're going to do. 
We're going to do it individually. We're going to do it as a church. We're going to turn northward. The Lord has said, you have gone around this mountain long enough. And all that means is it's time to show us some new things. You see, the Lord was referring to the children of Israel. They had wandered around the desert for 40 years. And they were on their way to the promised land. But they kept tripping over themselves. Tripping over their flesh. So what he was saying to them was like, I have something better for you. Aren't you getting tired of the same old thing? Yeah. Through our lives, through what we do, through the world, trying to tell us different. Haven't you been walking around this wilderness long enough? Don't you want to experience the change in, in just everything that the Lord has to offer? Everything that He says that He has in store for you? The promised land has been waiting for us all this time. It's amazing. We've circled this mountain long enough. Can you imagine wandering in circles and circles and circles for 40 years? Well, guess what? It happened. And it happened to God's favored people, the children of Israel. We need to be able to open ourselves up as people, as a church, as a county, doesn't matter, as a, as a, as a country. And just let Lord give us what he has promised for us and what he has in store for us. You see... The children of Israel wandered around. They never, they never sought the change that was necessary for them to experience that everything that God had in store for them. They never sought it out. They were too busy worrying about this and worrying about that and let, instead of letting God sort things out. Instead of I am, I can, and I will, for them it was more like I can't. And I won't. The sad thing here is that there's still people today that are wandering around in the desert, Amen. reluctant to make the change, reluctant to change the course in their lives, to experience all the blessings that God has in store for them. We miss so many, so many blessings that are so close that you could throw a stone and hit them, waiting for us. The word of the Lord said, you've been in this place long enough. God said it then, and it still holds true today. Nothing has changed. It's time to change our circumstances, your circumstances, the world's circumstances. You can know this, and how can it be? We can know this because God says it can be. God's word said it is possible. It's time to set a new course, a new plan of action. It's time to realize that a change will do everyone good. People were opposed to change. You know, I couldn't, oh, I wanted to live, I wanted to move, I wanted to do all kinds of stuff. But now I'm settling into who I am and just the thought of moving is like, mm, nah. <laughs> but 20 years ago, man, I was all about it. There was no doubt it. No doubt about it. Um, so... We know God's word says it's possible. God's going to do the good. He has a plan of action for all of us. Does anybody feel like they need today a victory? Does anybody this morning feel as though they need help with life, with church, with people, with family, finances, health, just personal anything? about your spiritual life. Need any help with that? Well, guess what? Jesus is ready to deliver. Whatever you need, whether it's this morning or whenever, it just doesn't matter because He has already been victorious. Yes. It's already He's already claimed victory. He's ready over any and all situations. Anything that you've encountered, that you feel is holding your back, doesn't matter because that encounter has already been defeated. Yes. And it was defeated readily. You see, he already took care of it. And he already took care of it on the cross. Amen? Amen. There is nothing, and I repeat nothing, that can stand up against the mighty power 
of God. Nothing can stand up to what he did. When he died on the cross, he died for each and every one of us. Is anybody ready for change? Anybody ready for change? Is anybody sick and tired of being sick and tired? Is anybody ready to take back what the enemy has taken from us? He's been stealing things for way too long. And it's time to use the authority of the Holy Spirit to put him down. Is anybody ready to proclaim, I am, I can, and I will? Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I think the key words there was the very last part. With all your heart. Yes. See, I love what it says. It's talking about God's plan for all of us. All of us. Even the ones that don't feel worthy. You ever felt like you, you don't feel worthy? Well, guess what? It says who? It says the enemy? Or says God? Big difference. The accuser is going to tell you that you're not worthy of God's goodness. You're definitely not worthy of his blessings. But that's not what God's word says, is it? So let's go a little bit further. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. Did you know that making a plan requires a lot of thought? Especially when you're making it for someone else's benefit. For someone else's welfare. For someone else's life. But God's word doesn't say plan. God's word says plans. Plural. It just means that he's thought long and hard about everybody here. He's thought long and hard. When he was laying the foundations of the earth, he already knew you. And he was already thinking about the glory that he was going to let you stand in. He was already thinking about the kingdom that was going to be built for us to stand in. God wants to provide a future. Doesn't matter how young we are, doesn't matter how old we are, God's ready to take action. And all we have to do is get out of the way. <laughs> when God said He wants to have an abundant life, like wants us to have an abundant life, that he has promised, he meant it. God doesn't say anything that he does not mean. So many aren't willing to make that change in their way, thinking that they'll just accept those words at face value. But God said it, and that's more than enough reason to believe, absolute, that it will come to pass. Abundant life are God's words, not man's. God didn't make those words up. And men had nothing to do with it. Don't be the one to cheat yourself of what God has to offer us. Of what God wants to do in your life. If you're not living an abundant life or the abundant life that God has promised each and every one of us, don't blame Him. That's tough to say up here, but the fact, but that's a fact. Because I live it myself. I have to continually get out of the way of myself. So get out of his way. Let him start giving you all that he has for you. All that he has for this church. You have to say, I am and I can. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't say some things or a few things. It says all things through Christ. People can do and are capable of so, so much. God has made us a marvelous creation. When He created mankind, 
he, he, he just, he made an incredible, an incredible thing. And he already knew. After all, the Bible does say that we are made in his image. So why is it then that people are capable of so many different things? We put a man on the moon. We can accept and are willing to try new inventions, new medicines, another man's opinion. But when it comes to the things of God and what he wants to do for us, through his word, suddenly the word can has a T tacked to the end of it. With a capital C, and all of a sudden it becomes can't. Is anyone here this morning tired of being trapped in the word can't? Because we can do all things through Christ. He was a can-do kind. Of, he was a can-do type of guy. See, he didn't know the word can't. I'm not even sure that it was in his vocabulary. Because God's word says that we can. Which means everything we do, that Jesus is involved in the details, I can and I will. We can accomplish this because the word of God says so. Because when we depend on Jesus and his finished work instead of ourselves, and that is when and only when it becomes possible. And these are the truths that have the promise of God behind them. Truths that the accuser has stolen for long enough from God's people and truths that need to be reclaimed on this very day, on this very hour. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, disciples, apostles, prophets, Third is teachers, then miracles, gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and different kinds of tongues. So you see, the Lord, is, you might say, has his guns are loaded and he's ready to go. Yeah. Now you are the body of Christ, and you're each members individually. There's so much that can be done for the kingdom of God. And there's so few that are willing to get involved, whether it be the church or the world. You know, we look out here, there's very few that are willing to get involved. Isaiah 6, 8 said, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And whom will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. You see, God is looking for men and women who will stand up and say, I will. I will do whatever needs to be done to further the case of Christ. I will be ready to go and do what Jesus would have me do. I will go where he wants me to go. See, God is looking for someone willing to step out of the box of normalcy. Someone ready to go and do a new thing in their life, in their church. Is anybody fed up with the present situation that the enemy has enclosed us in? It doesn't have to be that way. Because we have complete authority with Christ to tie it up, to bind it up, and cast it down to the feet of Jesus. Amen. All we have to do is change it. We say yes we have to make changes in our lives. Maybe not some. Maybe people say, well, you don't know what changes I have to make in my life, and I, and I probably don't. But I know someone who does. I know the master of all possibilities. The one who is in the life-changing business, you might say. Almighty God. God said, you've circled this mountain long enough. It's time for you to go through it. And I feel like that's what Rock of Balkans getting ready to do. I feel that we've circled the mountain long enough. And now it's time to go through. And we can do all things through Christ. The Bible's an amazing, amazing book of turnarounds. I'll tell you what, from the first time you opened... 
Genesis until the last page of Revelation. It is one turnaround after another. And every turnaround involves someone giving it up to God. We can't do it ourselves. And we ought not even try to do it ourselves. We have to have Jesus in every detail of everything we do. One of the best scenarios in the Bible about the big turnaround, we might call it, is something that looked absolutely hopeless. Nothing. It was completely impossible. Beyond the point of no return. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10 is the valley of dry bones. It says, God grabbed me. God's Spirit took me up and set me down in the middle of an open plain, strewn with bones all over. He led me around and He led me among them. A lot of bones. There were bones all over the plain, dry bones, bones that were bleached by the sun. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Master God, only you know that. He said to me, prophesy over these bones, dry bones, listen to the message of God. God the Master told these dry bones, now here's where it gets important. I am bringing the breath of life to you and come to life. I'll attach the tendons to you, put meat on your bones, cover you with skin, and breathe life into you. You'll come alive and you will realize that I am God. I prophesied just as he had commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound and a rustling. The bones moved and began to come together, bone to bone. I kept watching, tendons formed, the muscles on the bones. Then the skin stretched over them, but they had no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Tell the breath. God the master says, come from the four winds, come breath. Breathe on these slain bodies. Breathe life. So I prophesied just as he commanded me. The breath entered them and they came alive. They stood on their feet and were a huge army. That's one of the best turnarounds in God's Word. And there's many, many more. You see, we serve a God of endless possibilities. If He can breathe life into the dry bones, He can take care of your situation, my situation, and any situations that we ask Him to get involved in. Nothing is too hard for Him. There is no situation that He cannot turn around He's always working on each and every person here on your behalf to turn things around, any problems that may. He always works all things together for those who love Him because He loves you. He's waiting for you. God is waiting for you. So what are your needs this morning? You know, whatever it is, God has the abilities to take care of it with ease. If we let him. It's all about new. It's all about refreshing. Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. You see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. That's God saying, I'm going to take this and I'm going to get it right. And I'm going to lead everyone to streams in the wilderness. Can you imagine a river in a desert? Well, guess what? God can. See, a lot of people believe God can turn any situation around, any situation around for everyone except for yourself. And it's just not true. The scripture that we just read tells us that God is doing something fresh. God is doing something new. But the condition and requirement for receiving a, the new is to let go of the old. Reminds me, we, we, how about the story of uh, the man at the um, pool of Bethesda? That was a place of blessing. 
no doubt. He had, he had seen so many people get their healing. He had seen so many people get their deliverance, get their breakthrough. And he just couldn't get in there. And repeatedly, repeatedly, the devil taunted him, tormented him, probably told him, you're never going to get your miracle, ever. But that's the enemy. Enemy probably told him, it's been 38 years, what are you doing here? Give up already. Quit trying. But one day, the water didn't just stir. But the one who could make it stir stood in front of him. The Son of the Most High, Jesus Christ. And you know what Jesus, do you know what he did? Do you remember what he did? He didn't bring up any of the negative garbage in this life that life has to give us or the lies that the devil had spun. He just asked him one question. And he asked him, do you want to be healed? At that moment, there wasn't enough disease in the world to keep him sick because he was standing before the Lamb of God. Amen. The only one who could keep him from his blessing would have been himself. And I'll tell you the same thing here this morning. The only one that keeps you, me, and anything else from its blessing is ourselves. God stands ready. Or does he stand ready? He loves you guys. He loves each and every one of you. We're the only ones. He wants to bless you. The Bible says that he loves to bless his children. It gives him great pleasure. You know, my daughter Natalie's here this morning. I love giving her things. And I'll tell you what, when I when I give her things, whatever it may be, Maureen and I, and and you just seal that you just see that 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 look. You know the look. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Giving your child a blessing. And God stands ready to bless you. Jesus has already done everything that can be done for us to receive Him. Receive His Father's blessings. He's already paid our ransom for our sins with His blood. And He's just making us ready. He's already provided for our healing with His body. And he is willing to give us access to everything that he has done for us. The rest is up to us. We are the most blessed people on the earth. This country is the most blessed country on the earth. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. And when you stop and think about it, he couldn't have made it, he could not have made it any easier. For us to receive him. So I'll finish up with this. Why wait any longer. To receive God's blessings. Why would we? Why would we do that? Why would we wait? We need to start walking in all the things that God has given us. Start enjoying everything. That God, that God died for. To make possible the abundant life that God promised all of us. And when we do that, soon you'll see God's goodness and you'll be shouting from the rooftop, glory to God. But what we have to do is we have to say, I am able and I can do all things through Christ. I will be found faithful. Do you believe it? Yeah. Then we have to receive it. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you just show us uh, how to take your word, Lord, and just live it, Lord. We ask, Father, for you to watch over us because we are excited for brand new things, Lord, that you are ready to show us, Father, and we can't wait to receive your blessings, Lord. We want to keep Christ in all the details as you request, Lord. And we thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. And it's in Jesus' name. And the church said... Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us uh, as we sing, Lord, I Need You, on page 28.
Um, and just having the wind blow through, Lord, as we just lift you up, Lord, and just give you glory. Because you deserve all praise and glory, Lord. All praise and glory. You are the creator of all things in all of the world. And we ask, Lord, that as your people leave today, that you watch over them, Lord. That you take care of them. That you guard them and give them safe travels. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Amen.